Welcome to InstaLock Mid, Episode 5, a very special Episode 5. This week I am joined, as always, by Aloysius. What up? And SG Rensler. What up? And we are here this week with little news. Not a ton, but we got a lot of great discussion. So let's get right into it. So a little bit later on in the episode today, stick around. We will have our uh, this week's contest. I will have the details for you later on that night, but you may be walking away with a Pax Siver skin. So stay tuned for that. Rensler, how was your week? Week was pretty good. I spent most of my time watching uh, MasterChef Australia. Really good. Took like three episodes to get used to the accent. And been playing around in Blender a lot. Over the weekend, saw the new Spider-Man film, and I spent most of Sunday re-editing episode four because apparently I snuck copyrighted content in there and wasn't supposed to, so I fixed it. That was my week. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta love those copyright laws and whatnot. I feel like I need to see Avengers before I go into Spider-Man. I feel you, like my superhero... You haven't seen Avengers my... yet? No. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, it's awful. worth it. It seriously is worth it. Yeah. We, no, we've I... already griped at him about it. I've heard, but <laughs> Aloysius hasn't seen the thing with the Pandora and Avatar. Avatar. Hasn't seen Avatar yet, so. I don't want to see Avatar. Well, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll make it. We'll make it a night. Aloysius, where were you? Where were you this week? I've been working a ton, but I did just get my uh, Nexus 7 tab- tablet from Google. So I've uh, been having a heyday and a half playing with that thing. It really is that good for the price point. It's it's incredible. Very good tablet. I've been trolling around on Twitter all week. That's pretty much it. Trying to connect with people. If you're out there, if you're listening and you're out there on Twitter, go ahead and follow us, InstaLock Mid. We're always talking with the other people who are using League of Legends hashtag and connecting and tweeting. And, and Tom stuff. has no life, so he lives on Twitter. So help him out. Pretty much. Pretty much. I have Hootsuite set up so that I can work, watch works stuff and the stuff for severity and instalock all in one little nice web app so i live on that pretty much while i'm at work and not droning over some excel file so so moving on to the news not a lot of news this week which this past couple of weeks we've been berated by just article after article and it's been crazy just the amount of stuff that's been released with you know, the different remakes coming out, and Ezreal was kind of the, the beginning of all of that. This week, not a whole lot on the news front to talk about. We had uh, some potential leaks for the Heimerdinger rework, some details there. There's a lot of upgrades to turrets coming out, which sounds pretty cool. He's getting an extra turret. The way that turrets work are going to be a little bit different i'm not a huge heimerdinger player i've played him before so i kind of know how how he is there are there's some tweaks coming there his ulti is getting a rework it now makes the next spell free and increases its effectiveness so with some additions to some other some of his other spells i definitely think that Heimerdinger is going to get the same level of rework that we saw Twitch and and Evelyn get, you know, in the patch that came out today. Speaking of which, the mid-July patch came out this morning on North American servers. A little disappointed to see Zira or Zyra not come out, but you know what? I felt like she was a little bit early. It seemed like she... As soon as the last champion got announced, she was right behind there. And maybe it's just because we had news article after news article, but it seemed a little preemptive. What are you guys? Uh, what are you guys thinking about that? When do you think we're going to see Zero? I think at this point it has to be next week. I'm glad they they pushed her back with all of the reworks to Evelyn and Twitch. I think that. Had they tried to push a new champion with this, we would have seen the same downtime as we saw last time. So glad to see that they're at least telling people it's another week. We still have all the information. It's, you know, we already have, I believe, an art spotlight for her. So plenty of content, plenty of knowledge out there. It's one more week. Right. And you can still play her on the public beta. So 
I know they're going to continue to do testing there. And to be honest, I'd rather have them testing that and keep that in closed beta while they potentially try to balance out Evelyn and Twitch if it needs to be. And, you know, let that be a priority only because it's live. So didn't get too much time coming home from work so late to play League, but I did actually get to play a game. The one game I did play happened to have Evelyn Twitch and myself as Zinn all in the same game. So I was talking to some people following Twitter for those people who have the opportunity to play during the day. And uh, I'm hearing overall pretty good things about the buffs. I've heard mixed things about Evelyn. Some people saying that they still have a hard time with her. Others are saying that she's super OP now. But those were mixed across either people playing against her or playing with her. So I think if you're a an old school Evelyn player and you, you've played her before, you're probably going to see a decent boost. And same with Twitch. People are liking the Twitch buff. Um, they're having a lot of fun with it. So I've been playing Zin, and I played Zin before he got his remake in the jungle, and also in lane, depending on how I felt that day or if Aloysius was yelling at me or not. I always felt like he did have a little bit of that glass cannon-esque to him, and he definitely was a burst him down and uh, you know maybe not make him out of the fight, depending on how well fed you got. Oh, but... glass cannons, we love you playing him it was odd i didn't look up any i mean i read through his his changes obviously but i didn't look up any kind of builds or anything or see what people were saying about them surprisingly there was next to no chatter about zen that i was picking up on at least and the changes of uh what was going on so he was he was pretty interesting i really like what they did with crescent sweep it was a great get off me ability when you're getting dove or whatever. If you just don't attack anybody and don't put that new debuff, it is called that new debuff uh, challenged. If you don't put challenge on them, it knocks them all back. So if you're getting tower dove and you're at low health, you can just knock them all out of the way or use the ridiculous speed buff from Battle Cry and uh, Three Town Strike to you know, lock them up under the tower. So I didn't try too much directional control with Crescent Sweep and trying to use it as a positioning tool rather than sort of a defensive measure. I can so, tell you the most important part, it has a new particle. That's really important. It has new, yes. new shinier, <laughs> newer, higher polygon particles. Yes. There we go. Because that makes the, the whole difference, man. It does. Oh. It does. And I think if you went and looked back at League when it first came out and looked at it now, other than the huge map rework that happened before the podcast and, and God right. knows how long before that, I definitely think you would see a much better looking game. And with all the art updates and whatnot. Yay, that... shinier stuff. Oh no, we my love... graphics card can't handle it anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the things my computer runs consistently well. I can't believe they changed the system that. requirements after launch. I hate you guys. But no, seriously, so looking much. through the patch notes, I don't care about anything else. All I care about right now is Summoner's Rift, Outer Turret Vision Range, increased to 1095 from 800. Yes, get pwned by turrets. Get pwned. <laughs> from what I understand, their damage range, the, the range they can actually detect somebody and fire at them, is equal to the vision range. I don't know if that's totally accurate, but that's how it seems. So guess what? You're going to get pwned about a half a second earlier because they have 300 points more range. So, haha. Get killed. You know, I didn't... I didn't think, I didn't notice that on the list, surprisingly. Yeah, it's there. Just under uh, Summoner's Rift, under Ziggs, right under the Satchel Charge thing, yeah. Is it vision, is that damage range or is that vision See, range? that's the that thing. Vision? I don't know, I don't know 100% if they're linked, but most things that are automated by a system like this, the vision range is the damage range. Because obviously you can't hit it if it can't see it, but you can definitely have something where it can see you a mile away, but it can't hit you till you're standing in front of it. Interesting. There's well, either, also... way, either way, we aren't going to be seeing Evelyn or Twitch diving any towers anytime soon. And a heart of gold. So, Health reduced. The one thing I am I am not excited about as far as those turret changes, even though it, it wasn't really part of the change, now with the stealth rework, a really unfortunate way that has closed off a lot of avenues for gangs to come from not the river and i think it's 
I think it's a little bit of a hassle that now you can't come from the tri bushes and and mid lanes. You can only reach so far before being exposed. I don't know how I feel about so that. So a turret that exposes really... you? Is that? Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll reveal stealth. Oh snap! Um, is it that far though? Yes. Is it really out to the bushes? Uh, there was a post on the League of Legends subreddit about. Um, there's a guy that went through the hassle on the public betas and drew some red lines over the paths that you can't take now, and tri bushes are out of the question. Wow. So. That was largely... Hmm. I'm surprised that wasn't discussed more mm -hmm. prior to this patch coming out. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. well, that's a big thing, man. Getting exposed yeah. by turrets, and you're trying to run around, and, oh, I'm going to get, get totally ganked this guy, total stealth, got the Avery work, I'm totally... Oh, crap. They can see me. Damn it. Right? It's like yeah. a naked dream and you wake up and you're still in it. Like, no. So, that is, yeah. <laughs> that is definitely all that earns its stealth remake. Is now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bye bye stealth turret. remake. We just made the turrets OP. Great. Stealth and o jangle. OP here. turrets. Thank you. I love what they did with the GP5 items, though. And it's stupid. And I know there's, it's like, what, Aloysius, eight minutes for a GP5 to pay for itself? I believe so. Now uh, it's like I think it's eight or eight and a half or something. They add it to the tooltip that you can see how much money you've made, which I think is pretty sick, and that opens itself up to some tactics for planning out how long to keep one of those. And I know you could always do the calculation ahead of time and say like, okay, I need to have you know heart of gold for sixteen minutes to pay for itself and one more thing but i i like that i like being able to see how much gold i've done um they also added a similar counter for the ionic spark so you can see when the charges are coming which i only use that on champions that spam auto attack super fast anyway so or i don't know yeah i don't know how helpful that'll be uh, and i suppose it's always a nice thing if you're really if you're planning those out ahead of time and really counting on that damage to come through which i don't think people use it for that but you know it's nice nice to see that come out they also modified mm -hmm. the uh my favorite item uh, harry potter decided to give us his philosopher's stone but he nerfed the health regen before he gave it to us so now it's mm. 15 health per five seconds instead of 18 so uh thanks now i'm gonna die great i hate uh, you. i hate you three. harry potter that three seconds, I'm just going to rage at Riot every single time. <laughs> no! I, dude, I, I would have had nine more health in those 15 seconds. I would have lived! No! <laughs> the other the other most, and, and I think this is a huge feature for me, one of the biggest features that I'm glad was fixed in this is now the fix to the disconnect issues. Yes. That's huge. Yes. Auto-reconnecting now? Yeah, that's big. The inability to see minions the inability to attack turrets oh my god all it's those, just i hated that much needed absolutely hated it you and the rest of the world yeah yeah the entire player doing? base is saying the same thing and in a really i guess you could call it a stupid way but when you would disconnect from watching a game mm -hmm. and it would be like oh do you want to reconnect right after like no i'm oh. done watching this let me let me get out don't make me close through a second yeah that is kind of annoying that is fantastic kind of cool too malzar his little uh minions dance now his pets no oh dance God. animation boiling dance animation <laughs> is it the vacarena because they need to update that no. if it's the no but Macarena. they they really did need to fix his minions would not follow let me guess it's the party so. rock dance right they're shuffling great that's all i, I need to see, see. now we're gonna have to look at yeah that. put please hey riot please do this please put red foo in the game so i can kill him Thank you. That is all. You know his name, which I think is more than most than most people do. So yeah. poo on you, Rensler. Oh, okay. Speaking speaking of poo on you, Rensler, Rensler, how are your games this week? Oh my zero to hero. I managed to get one entire game in and I went four, four, and seven, which for me is decent for the average player. It it they just yeah, yeah, you'd be ashamed to know that guy. I, I played a Warwick on a team that decided just not talk at all. And at the end of the game, I was being called nasty things in three different foreign languages. So I realized that uh, I wasn't playing with Americans. 
was it bots uh, or was it um... it was a bot game yeah okay it was a bot All game right. because one guy was trying to go he was trying to get his record of 30 and 0 and he ended up feeding worse than i did because like i said four, 4 and 7 wasn't too bad for me and here's how i play smite and it's the same way i play league if i'm in a lane and i'm killing somebody and somebody else can come gets to comes and gets the kill that's fine. I don't rage on him. I really don't. And yes, I could use the gold boost. I could use the XP boost. I'd like to get my level, and I would have liked to kill that guy. But for me, it's more about the team and getting the kill, period. So that's why I don't rage on people. And sometimes that's why I end up two or three levels behind people, and that's really what happened here. One guy was like 24, 3, and something, and the other guy was going for 30 and 0. They basically never wanted to end the game. They just wanted to farm the bots. For example, that. they would purposely get their, their creeps killed by not killing three or four waves of the enemy creeps in a row, or just let a turret just rock them and wait for one of those other champions to come out, and they'd try to gank from the uh, bushes because this is pre-patch. So they'd use Ev and jump in, or they'd use somebody else to jump in, or I saw a lot of uh, Pulse Fire Ezreal blasts from, from our, our lead derper over there, and that's how the whole game was. It sucked. It was like 54 minutes. It was. I stopped playing after no. about 40 minutes. I went I four, four, that. and seven on bots. It was like, Ugh, this sucks. So I just, I stayed at spawn and looked at Twitter stuff. There you go. But yeah, maybe we need to get you into a support role, because that sounds like the support mentality. All for the team, not I'm, going. Yeah, for the kills, I'm, I'm for but... the team. I don't need all the kills. If I can help the team win the game, which is really the point anyway, it doesn't really matter how you do it. If you start taking everybody and rush a turret lane and just go <laughs> right in through, buzz an inhibitor, get the nexus, and you're done in eight minutes, okay. Yeah. If you, but if you just want to sit back and farm champions and just keep going and keep going, it's really, really annoying. Well, maybe we'll get you into Cho'Gath instead of Zhen Zhao. We had talked the other episode about. Potentially, with his reworks coming out, having you go and give Xin Zhao a shot, I would almost, I would say, don't go for him. The changes right now, because I actually had specific questions on that. I said, how does the new Xin Zhao compare to the old one? Uh... I saw the rework in the patch notes, so is he still worth getting? Because I haven't spent the uh, IP on it yet. I imagine he's good compared to how he used to be. I I had one match with him. I was never the best at him, but I still I had good games and I had decent right. games. Okay. Um, but I think he is a little bit more skill based now, and I think a good recommended champion like Cho'Goth as a support, maybe in the top lane as just a solo, that might be a good thing for you. And Cho'Goth is only 450, so 450 IP or RP? IP. He's oh, jeez. Yeah, I'll and go buy that right and, now. He's big and stupid. You just give him health items and GP5 items and then just walk around. and GP5 gold producing? Yeah. Okay. So just items to make him earn more gold per second. I'll give you a build for him. The build. That, I don't uh, know what GP5 stands for. I'm thinking it's uh, gold producing gold five per, per five. second. Gold yeah. for five seconds. It's actually a, uh, it's a team of gangplanks. Just five gangplanks on <laughs> one team. <laughs> Oh god, you, you uh, troll. Yeah, <laughs> it's been one of those weeks. Yeah, you sound a little down today, man. I was I was, I was going to type into Skype. I'm like, you know what? I'm not feeling the energy right now, man. What's up? <laughs> What's going on? But now, I was I was trolled pretty hard today. And I should have probably... <laughs> I just I trolled the volume probably... on the stream. I just... Sorry, sorry, podcast. I just trolled the volume on Skype. <laughs> I I was trolled this week by Aloysius at work, and for those of you what, who Ali, are, come on, man. are new to the podcast, be nice to him. Aloysius and I work for a company out in Rochester, New York, and he's in the IT department. That's all I'm we're in saying. The marketing. I'm in the marketing department, and I know a little bit about computers. It's thirteen fifty, enough, not three fifty. I know enough to oh what. Thirteen fifty. I'm looking at it. At Chogoth? And and C H O apostrophe Goth. If that doesn't spell Chogoth, then I'm obviously wrong. Wow, that's weird. Okay. Either way, I'll play like two games and get it. Two or three, yeah. whatever. Maybe thirty, because I lose ninety percent of my games. I don't know. True. True. So I I go into work this morning and my computer is making a beeping noise. Oh, this. Beeping. 
Right. No, and apparently this is some big thing that people all know. When that thing makes a beeping noise, people know exactly what it is. Well, us unwashed IT people, non-IT people, have no friggin' clue what this beep is. <laughs> it's usually low batteries on a UPS. I've been trolled by, my, by my own boss that's the what, same way. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, like, okay, maybe there's, like, a drive that's failing, or the power is low. And this this computer is terrible. Like, it takes me from startup to being able to launch Outlook and actually click on something and make it work about six minutes. Oh, boy. I've, I've timed that. And it doesn't <laughs> seem like much, but it it's the worst. See, people, so. this is the one where you use a remote software when you wake up. You log into your computer at work. You drive to work, and maybe it's booted by the time you get there. Pretty much. That's how it is. Yeah. I've and had to do that before. Rocking, it's still rocking Windows XP. So oh, pff, yeah. Mr. Futuristic right here. It's Minority Report up in here, man. <laughs> and Mr. Windows XP, yeah. Uh, but uh, So I get in, and it's making this beeping noise, and it's pissing me off. And I'm trying to find an intelligent way to report this issue. <laughs> and my computer's <laughs> like freaking making a noise over here. Can someone because come over here and, and check this futuristic machine of mine? They don't already like – they already don't like me. I mean, they do. They don't mind me. I don't but they mind give, them. They give me crap for being marketing and whatever. Uh, <laughs> Let me guess, Tom. Your cup holder's broke again? Yeah, stop doing that. Yeah. Big gulps do so, not fit there, okay? I tried. I go at it with science, and I, I got my phone out, and I'm timing intervals between the beeps, and – I, Mike eventually comes to my desk, and I realize – I should have realized he had no reason to come to the desk. It's zero reason to come and see either me or the person who sits next to him. All I have to say, Mike, is you know those comics where it has that really epic troll face? Did you show up wearing that face? I should have. Was it the I epic let, troll no, face? He, oh. he led me on for a little bit. He's like, all right. Well, I told him the problem, and it obviously didn't – it would be perfect if it reproduced right then and there. I he's like, all right, we'll get it on audio, you know, and we'll we'll figure that out. I told him that the way the computer beeps is explicitly important to troubleshoot it, which is oh believable. My. Were you, you were you triggering the system speaker? No, it's a uh, it's actually an Annoyatron, the little magnetic ones. Oh, it's a USB. Uh, uh, it was no, no it's, it it's, was in my computer. Like I took to his pull... case apart and. Put in there <laughs> and at random time intervals it will just go off and make this god awful loud oh, annoying that's squeal. awesome i have to get one and it yeah it stops after just a few seconds but just enough to know that you heard it and you're not going yeah to say. yeah okay seriously i heard it that time it's real hey bob did you hear that bob yeah you heard that too right where the hell was that coming from i'm gonna it's uh, i'm gonna get aloysius on the phone man i need him to help me out but That's good. there's a little caveat I had to this, and Aloysius doesn't believe me, but something happened at work between he and I. Something occurred that's a little bit – it's like a half troll. It's like a one-step troll. A slash TRO. Uh, the two L's yeah. haven't made it on there yet. Yeah. What is this? Uh, and Aloysius <laughs> hasn't figured it out yet. I think <laughs> you're lying to me. Oh, telling my God. Him, telling him – means I lose something, and it's something I enjoy having. So I'm going to let him try to figure it out. Luckily, only because I won't be concerned with it, it'll lose its entertainment value. And no, 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 no. Something. It's no entertainment value on my end. This is, it's all entertainment it's value on my end, I'll give you that. It's entertaining because because I just got trolled, and this is like in my mind, the fact that this has been going on for so long. And you've essentially forgotten about it. Well, that's, uh, that's save, save it for what it's worth, because I'm not going to venture to. <laughs> I'm it not out. falling for it, dumb. dude. I, yeah, it's exactly. gonna be next Tuesday. I you're gonna be like, dude, nothing. seriously, what is it? <laughs> I have to investigate it a little bit more to see if you're actually affected by, by this. Oh my God, maybe, Sherlock Holmes at work. Maybe by the end of the day, I'll I'll reveal it to you, and I'm I'm gonna reveal it to you, and you're just gonna be like, oh, whatever, and then be upset that I made more of a deal out of it, but I'm getting a little bit of personal enjoyment out of this. What? But. You just said you weren't. 
Okay, how about we move on to the next topic? That would be a great idea. Oh, what are we here to do? <laughs> it's lane comp time, baby. All right, so our weekly comp. We've got a bottom lane combo. We've got Blitzcrank and Caitlyn. This lane is awesome early game. It's great throughout the middle of the game during laning. Um, so I am a pretty bad AD carry in the sense that my work is completely inconsistent. But Aloysius is a decent Blitzcrank, so... Give us the Blitzcrank rundown. What's your what's your objective here in this lane, Aloysius? The objective is, as always, in a slightly tailored, different, only slightly modified from the, the usual support. Blitzcrank's support capabilities don't get him a heal. You know, you're not giving your AD carry mana. You're not giving them attack damage. You're not giving them movement speed or anything great. You are simply a whole truck ton of utility. Um, and that comes in the form of your pull, obviously your Q, you know, being able to close the distance really quickly on enemies that escape or flash away. Uh, your E being able to knock people up and and keep them around for longer while your AD carry should be killing them. And the silence with the AOE damage. Those three things make you really awesome, a very vital part to the lane combo. Now keep in mind that Blitzcrank really isn't the support to play with every AD carry bottom. But one particular thing about this combination is the pull with Caitlyn's trap that Machinarum will touch on more in a little bit. But really, your lane presence really needs to be that of kind of a bully. A lot of times you wanna you do want to stay hidden. A lot of bush hiding, sitting in there waiting for the minions to die or launching your, your grab just as the last minion dies. Making that concern and that worry a big part of your opponent's game and the more you can do that and the better you are at landing those grabs you know sometimes you can sneak out of your lane and go help other lanes because they haven't had great vision on you or they're forced toward bushes now and that apprehension that fear still stays with them and a lot of times people won't enter the lane as comfortably and won't push it as hard as they normally might cool now caitlin you're not deviating too, too much from any kind of normal build, but what you do want to make sure you absolutely do first is grab traps first. That's the first spell you're going to buy. The goal here for early game ganks is to get into that front bush as soon as possible and lay down a trap. You want to trap right at the tip of the bush so that your Blitzcrank can pull in the first guy who comes around He's going to get the, the pull in and then the trap afterwards. And they're, at that point, you're either going to make them waste some of their summoners or abilities or you're going to get a kill. And going forward into the game, you know, you're going to want to use your range to keep up your harass. Obviously be getting all of the creep kills you can. But just make sure you're laying out your traps in the bush to set up Blitzcrank for those grabs. One at the top and bottom of the far bush, be it, you know, whatever side you're on, is always good if you can get up there. But make sure you always reserve one for the the top of your bush in the, in the middle of the lane so that uh, your Blitzcrank can move in and make a grab from your side. So also keep in mind, if you can get a trap out ahead of them into the normal path, maybe into the jungle that they're going to run in to try to escape you, that's always a good situation. So that that's pretty much it for the lane comp. Uh, get out your traps, use Blitzcrank's utility of knockups and grabs to control the lane and get them into into those little traps and get major kills. So moving on, we have our newer weekly section, Q&A with Rensler, renamed from Questions. <laughs> the worst segment name ever, by the way. Pointed out in our last episode, youtube.com slash severity gaming. All right, so Q&A with Rensler. This week we've got different questions, different answers, different ideas, a whole different outlook on life. Okay. So, 
Who currently is the most overpowered champion? The most OP, freaking broken. Hey, you should play this guy because he's way too OP. But when you see him on the other side of the screen, you're like, ah, oh, crap. I got to fight this guy. Freaking OP. Okay. I'll have to kite him for 25 minutes. All right. Aloysius, go. It's kind of kind of hard. The recent balances have kind of fixed things. I honestly still think that Darius is, is too good. Why? Too strong. Why is he too uh, good? His... Lane presence is very strong. He can harass with the, with the best of them in like a top lane bruiser scenario. His utility for getting on you and ganking is awesome. And that damn true damage just, it makes kills early game and at level six very easy. And he can snowball pretty hard. Okay. I think I think he's up there on the list. All right, Darius, uh, Mr. Machinorum, who is the most overpowered champion? I'm going to go ahead and pick... As he looks through them. No. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pick a free week champion, actually, this week. Dr. Mundo. I've always hated Mundo. And it's because you just don't get the opportunity to kill him. Like, even games where the Mundo has been mediocre. I mean, any any champion, a bad, a bad person with them, is they're going to be bad. There are very few champions that can survive and do okay uh, unless you're very skilled with them but let's just assume that it's a good mundo with even a team still takes like three people to kill him it's ridiculous and his jungle speed that cleaver the cleaver by the way i've never played mundo until this past week that cleaver's little the spell projection that shows you where it's gonna go the hitbox is much bigger Mm, they're really. lying so it's why does it take three people to kill him is that his health regen is fast is he has a high starting health you, and gets a his, great you need health a guy level? and you need tank shred yeah his ulti gives him the most ridiculous health regen and it's on a really really short cooldown so oh, it's, boy it's not even it's not even unimaginable that if maybe you're trying to get him down and that's the first thing he pops to kind of sustain in that fight and the rest of his team shows up that by the end of that team fight, he's, he's not going to be, you know, he's charging, he's killing it again. So you basically have to send an assassin in against him because it's so good. Is that right? Okay, cool. It's, you need, you need a good amount of people for a, a great Mundo. You need like your team there to take care of. All right. Just to, you just ignore him and you kill everybody else and then let him walk away right. and cry because you didn't get your race. Yeah, I didn't get my pentakill. No. Okay, so that brings us to the next champion. Who is the most underpowered champion? Who's the guy that you're like, oh, I wish they'd give him a buff. He sucks so bad, but he's got a lot of potential. So, Mr. Montgonorum, who is the most underpowered champion? I'm going to say only because they're giving her a remake soon. And I've never seen one that's great karma in kind of a, a silly way. This is solely based off the fact that I never see karma in game. I never see karma played. And when I do, it's never played well. It's never like, oh, great, we have an awesome karma. So I don't know. We'll see how the how the boost comes. But I'm going to say that she is the most underpowered. Okay. And Mr. Aloysius. Oh, I disagree. Karma is good if if you have someone that knows the abilities. She's just got a it's a very weird support. I would actually say in a really weird way, not that I'm going to play her, but um I think Sejuani right now oh, uh, good is point. so neat. I think she was kind of middle of the road. Um I have seen them do well, but I, I don't think they do anything better than another champion can do. It's just you don't see her much. Her, she's not that frightening. She's not as tanky as you think she would or could be. She just she needs something. She needs some love. Okay. All right. right. I hear you. Now you're saying even with the good players, because I understand that good players want to play the better champions. Maybe not the broken OP ones, but they want they want to show they have some skill. But are the the worst champions your most underpowered champion? Are they that way because good players don't play them? Or are they that way simply because they are broken and they are underpowered? I have a very unique feel, and this is only my opinion, so take it or leave it as you will. My thought on what the phrase over and underpowered means is really the comparison of the utility or the role that a certain character can fill. 
So when you call someone over or underpowered, to me that means that there are other champions that can provide a lot of that same utility and maybe even better or slightly faster or more reliably, something along those lines. And that's that should, following those guidelines, always make such a champion, whether it OP or UP, be the always choice. Like, you know, he's, he's so good at this many roles that I... You know, if I want to do it, I have to pick him. Right. Or can't do it, won't pick them. I agree okay. with that to a point. I think there are some champions that are too easy to not do okay with. And to me, that's... And if, if you know what to do, they're fantastic. Such which, kind of like Dr. Mundo. Um, I've never played Mundo before. But even in a normal game, I was able to run around not really knowing what I was doing, figuring out along the way. But I wasn't actually dying or being there are plenty of situations where were it another jungler i wouldn't have done as well but where okay. i do agree with you is karma uh, there are better supports out there that you could play that either provide a unique enough utility or a better utility and i don't even know if karma is a support i could be wrong on that she um, is. yeah she is you know there are there are better ones out there to play that are better balanced and you know can do more things for you and are more widely accepted. All right. So. Just just as an example, a great great choice for it. I actually almost feel like Nautilus does everything that Sejuani does and better. Obviously, he doesn't get the little ice block, but he has his stun on his auto attack. He has the gap closer with his anchor. He has the slow. He has a great shield for himself. And his ulti knocks people up. So I, I think Nautilus does everything that Sejuani may have been intended to do better. Okay. Right. All right. Well, the next question. I don't think, Monkinorum, you played the game at launch, at release, technically? Nope. So the next two questions, I, I want to make sure they're right. Now, are we talking about game launch or release of the champion? Release of the champion. Okay. Or, I so... mean, I don't think Aloysius has played at the beginning of the game either so he wouldn't really so what we'll do is we can either answer. consider the, the first time you played as your considered release or we can say of any champion when they were released yeah any champion you experienced when they were released. okay so you guys are wondering what i'm going to ask it's pretty simple who was the most overpowered champion when that particular champion was released it could be at the beginning of the game or they could have been patched in so aloysius go I have an awful memory, so I'm sure that if people listen and they're they're longtime league players, I'm sure they'll say something different. But when Ari came out, it's one of the few champions that I remember playing so heavily. Ari's uh, they had to fix the mana cost. Her ability to harass was so good. She could escape. Her damage was just through the roof. She was everything an, an AP mid should be, and then some. So she was. I played it so I played so much so many games with Ari the first week before they before they started to really tone her back a little bit. Okay. And Mr. Makinorum. I'm kinda split. I was expecting Al was just to say Darius just because of how stupid he was. But I'm pretty split between Darius and Fiora. I remember hating when Fiora would would show up in a game because you would just you would either lane against her or she would be in the jungle and she would just tear you apart and there are very few champions that i can remember having that much animosity against playing and fiora was just that was the one i hated her on release okay that's great so now we'll flip the question which champion just sucked, was underpowered at release? You're, you, they release it, you play like two games, you're like, seriously? I'm a good player, and I just got freaking rickrolled. Okay, Mr. Makinorum, go. Even though I really enjoyed her when she came out, and I've been considering dusting her off and picking her back up, much to Aloysius, Aloysius I. No, don't you say Chagrin, Sejuani. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, oh. She was she was underpowered. I will agree there. I did have some fun with her at release, but I think there's more that could be done with her. Okay. And I think Aloysius is probably going to agree with me. Mr. Ellie? Uh, yeah, mine is, mine is very much her. Looking through a lot of the champions and just trying to kind of remember back to when they came out, I think everybody else had a little bit better than she did. 
and I usually I enjoy playing a, a newly released champion usually quite a few games before I'm willing to pass like a judgment or say like this is or isn't a play style I want. Sejuani, I think, made me to three games, maybe. Um, and just all games I did terribly. Um, I w- the tankiness that you'd expect wasn't there, and in exchange you weren't doing the damage. She just still is the one of the most underwhelming champions out I'm gonna there. I'm going to have to come up with, I'm just thinking of this because of the over and underpowered things. Everything's about numbers. When they're releasing a champion, they have to figure out mana cost and health regen and how much is this going to be. And the items are basically the same. So it's all about what the skills do, what the champion is geared for, and then it's all about numbers. Starting damage, uh, bonus per level, all that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to make a champion simulator where you <laughs> can take by the numbers two champions and pit them each other in like a cage match and just see which one's based off of numbers and actually have it run a, run a battle simulation. If it was one-on-one and you realized we're locked in a room and you had to kill the other guy to get out, pick two champions, which one would win basically every time. And that's how you could really consider an over or underpowered champion. Either you get the guy that loses every time or the guy that simply can't lose because he's just too, too right good. <laughs> all right, so uh, which champion is decent it's all right it's pretty good but you know i wish i could have that guy buffed a little bit you know give give him some love give him a little bit of doesn't have to be a rework but give him some juice and he's good to go give him some roids let him roid rage a little bit and he'll be all right so uh aloysius i know that plenty of people won't agree with this and i'm totally fine with that one of the champions that i just don't think uh, it's very situational, and it's so highly dependent on team comp and almost makes it not really viable. Poppy. Poppy huh. needs something. Um, and I know that when Poppy gets fed, she it's very easy to just snowball, and you can actually start to, like, 1v5 teams. I know that it's pretty ridiculous, but it's so easy to shut her down and stop her from getting anything, and it's almost a necessity to have gold per fives, multiples of them, you know, like... I, I think that she needs a little bit of love. All right, Mr. Machinorum. He's not bad. He's not great. And it takes too long to really get him going. Nasus. I hate... I love Nasus. I love playing Nasus. I love being in the top lane for forever and just Q farming until I decide I want to come down and just start making kills happen. But it's a very boring play style. And... I feel like only really his Q and his W and obviously his ulti play into playing him in a lane. I mean, sometimes that AOE thing, you can use it and it does do some damage and situationally it's okay. But I think just overall, he needs to be reworked in the sense of providing more than just a big stick. Well, he's very tanky. Yeah, he's... without without the cost of much. So he's a big right. stick and a shield. Yeah, right. All right. Which is but... why late game is all his. All right, and I don't know. Maybe it's just playing a game as him, like just the length of it and and how long it takes. And if if your team sucks, like you can kind of get you don't have much time to really make a difference in the game because you need to focus on that cue. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, so Mr. Machinorum, take it away with the next section. So we have our contest for this week. A couple weeks ago, we did the fastest game you can win in a normal 5v5, and we got a lot of great entries. So we still have some packs, skins kicking around. Aloysius was more than kind enough to provide a Pax Sivir skin for this competition. And this week, what we want to see is your highest kill-to-death ratio, the highest spread you can get in a match. It's the highest positive score. For those of you who aren't familiar with what a spread is or what your KD ratio is, take all of your kills and then all of the deaths, and then the difference between those, the highest number, uh, your highest positive value. We want to see this in 5v5 normal or ranked games in Summoner's Rift, so that's no 3v3, that's no bots, no... No bots! No 
Dominion. None of that. We only want Summoner's Rift, five people. Again, you can only enter in as an individual. You're more than welcome to use a team that's just going to feed you kills all day. Go for it. Send. Either there'll, There will be a post on the forum for submissions. We do require a screenshot and for you then to verify uh, if you do win your ownership of the account. That can come in two forms. It's either going to be me speaking to you in League itself. My summoner name is Mott Ganorum. Or through email, I will give you a list of tasks that will convince me of your ownership of that particular thing. Now, a lot of people were asking previously. They said they have Smurf accounts. They have a friend they want to give it to. You need to just show me that you own the account that won. You get a code, you put that code into the store, and it's all yours. So you just need to prove to me that you own the account, and you can do whatever you want with it. So again, for Pack Siver, your highest KD spread, normal 5v5 games in Summoner's Rift, ranked as well. All right. So, yes, normal games, ranked games, it. no bots. Give us the highest KD spread. Farm the daylights out of the other team, man. Embarrass them. And then take a screenshot, put it up on the forums, and you'll win yourself some skinnage. I think mine was a 17 and 1 game, or maybe maybe in the 20s and like 2 as Cho. I better see some 20s, baby. I better see some 20s. If someone gives me a 30, pff, uh, I don't know. I'll give you an RP card. Why not? Yeah. Maybe we have some extra copies of the Rift still. So maybe if you overly impress me and it's in like a ranked game or I'll something. I'll tell you what, right now, um, I still have a pristine copy of Rift. I did use it, so yes, there's no cellophane on it, but it is perfect. Rick, and I'll just send it to you. I don't play yeah. that game anymore. All right, and that is going to wrap it up for this week's episode of Instalock Mid. Thank you for joining us, as you will every week. Yeah, you uh, better. Next, next week, we have a special episode. We have... The crew from the Pentakill app coming onto the show and to talk with us. So look forward to that. As always, check us out on Twitter and Facebook. It's at InstalockMid or slash InstalockMid for Facebook. We're on iTunes, Google Play, and SeverityGaming.com as YouTube. well as YouTube. So come on, check us out. Go watch all of our other episodes. We just breached a thousand views on all of our videos, which is a cool milestone. And um, I want to inject something real quick. Okay. Uh, our our leader and master just came up with a a metrics system for our website. We have 574 hits on episode four. Holy <laughs> Ooh. There we go. <laughs> so that minus the I YouTube people and this is this includes iTunes, but there's five hundred and seventy four hits on the MP3 file. That's fantastic. So it's a weird thing that just popped up on my RSS feeds. The League of Legends community site just put out a ton of information. We have the sales for this week coming up. Where, uh, ooh, it says Juani skin. Aloysius will hate that. He's actually left. He went to go make dinner or something like that. So we got that coming out, and we have a new Summoner Showcase, episode 84. Some cool-looking stuff there. Mm -hmm. And we have... The uh, Challenger Circuits information about information about the regional finals at GameCon for PAX Prime coming up soon. Oh man! So go go to the uh, League of Legends website for that information. And this is the bad part about having <laughs> your podcast while live information is being produced. Well, so hey, man, we'll do there's it. There's the there's the PSA for this week, kids. Don't produce your website during or don't produce your podcast during normal operating hours <laughs> because stuff will come out and you'll be like crap we have to record more stuff which is exactly what we just did and yes i'm leaving all of this in uh please <laughs> please send me the link and i will put it up on the youtube video anybody else watching this on itunes or listening to this on itunes or on our website or going to the facebook link or the twitter link go to the youtube video the url for what we're talking about will be on your screen right now yeah. If you've done podcasts before and or any other kind of cast that provides a transcript, 
and you have some feedback you want to give us. We're new at this, you know, for the most part. We haven't really done much like this before. So we're always looking for some community feedback. And we asked for it last week, and nobody would give it to me. And that just sucks. It's a bummer. So give us comments, okay? You're going to see this on YouTube, so give us comments. If you're listening on Facebook, Twitter, our website, iTunes, go ahead and post in our forums. We will give you a forum link, and you'll just see it there in our main. Just go to Forums, League of Legends. It'll be in the general open forums for League of Legends. You don't have to sign up to our website. If you want to, that's great. We're not going to make you. It'll be a public forum. And tell us what you think. If we suck, let us know. If we're great, Let us know if there's things that you want us to talk about, especially if you can have information to back it up, because that's really what Machinorum does every week. It really comes up with tangible stuff, and then we've got information backed up behind it up, just like this Summoner Showcase thing, just like the new information they just released. We don't have time right now to go through all of it, so we're just going to give you the link, and you can look at it if you haven't done so already. So. And there you go. There you go. And if you are a mover and shaker in the community, if you do a stream or a blog or maybe even another podcast, and you want to come on our show and talk to us, feel free. You know, we're always looking for new people to come on the show. We had Matt Demers last week. Next week, we're going to have the guys from the Pentakill app. It's an app for the iOS and soon to be for the Android. And we've been talking to the LOL Girls community about uh, maybe having one of them come on. So feel free if, you know, you're a member of the community, it's a valid thing. Come on, talk about you, what you do, promote your stuff, we'll promote ours, and we'll do some good old-fashioned networking. Yes, good old shout-outs. Way to go. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for sticking around for the bonus extended content. And, uh, it's going to yeah, be a one-hour episode. Week. This is so bad. Pretty much. That's good, actually. Yeah, so we'll see you guys next week. This is Mott Ganorum signing off with Rensler. Yo! And Aloysius. Peace out. Thanks for watching, and see you next week. Peace! Bye, guys.